we're going to talk about uh, this wonderful subject. Uh, we are continuing on this series about the spiritual world. So along those series we have done several weeks of lessons uh, on this series. So let's uh, step right into the teaching straight away and let's start talking about... Today I've titled uh, this teaching uh, When God Speaks. It's a continuation from last week, so let's uh, let's look at some basis of scripture and let's begin to grasp our understanding of what God is saying. Right? Last week we looked about learning about the spiritual world. Right? The spiritual world. Remember what we talked about last week. It has its own language. It has its own order. It has its own principles. It's completely different from the way the natural world functions. Right? The natural world functions on a different time scale that we and I, you and I understand, right? Also, remember in the natural world, we have multiple of languages, right? We have incredible number of languages. You know, I heard in, in India alone, there's 120 languages in one nation. So can you imagine? But in the spiritual world, it's not like that. Right? It's not multiple of languages. There's only the heavenly language in which God communicates and um, uh, people in that realm begin to communicate. Right? So the principles are also different. Right? In the natural world, we are subjected to many things of the natural order. Right? Like the laws of gravity. Right? Different laws that are here in the natural world. But the spiritual world, it doesn't function that way. Right? That's why when Jesus was walking on the earth, remember he walked on water. Why? Because he was not subjected to some of the rudiments of the laws of the natural world, right? So let's begin this time looking at the first passage of scripture. Let's turn to John, right? Chapter 4, verse 24. Okay, let's look at that verse of scripture and what it says. It's such a powerful you know, verse of scripture, okay? And this is what John 4, uh, 4.24 says, that God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth right so very clear right in scripture here it's saying god is a spirit right it doesn't say god is an actual man god is a spirit and those that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth Right, so there must uh, the spiritual world is connected, right, through the spirit, right, not through the natural, but through the spirit. So this is this is of utter importance for us right now to understand that, right, that we must connect through the spirit. So let's go on. Okay, these are just uh, refreshing some of what we talked about last week. So when we see something in the spiritual world, we have concluded that we need to see in completion right so sometimes you have a dream or you have a certain sense of something or you have certain um, thought that comes into your mind right it's fragmented okay you cannot come to a conclusion until you see the complete picture right maybe you only see a portion of it right we do not need to interpret it until we see the complete picture right so in the spiritual in the spiritual world some of our, the dreams that we have some of the visions that we have okay we must be to give it time so that we can understand it in its entirety all right so through the interpretation we are also able to understand that through an acquired knowledge of the soul right so after we have seen these things what happens it still has to come through the knowledge of our soul why because some, certain things can be allegorical certain things can be just <clears throat> pictures right so you have to grasp an understanding what is this picture am i seeing what is this picture related to you know like for example in the old testament he talks about joseph right remember joseph said told his brothers and his family i have two dreams right and one of the dreams it's like he see this this grain of wheat and his grain is standing taller right so and he understood that by what he saw about this grain of wheat, about this harvest, okay, what he saw was that he saw himself being promoted, coming into leadership. Remember, he was 
the second youngest child of Jacob, right? But allegorically, as he was looking at it, a revelation came to him, an understanding came to him. So sometimes, right, it takes us time for us to understand certain things that we see, we don't want to quickly come into a conclusion, or we do not want to quickly uh, translate and say, oh, this is what it means. No, maybe that's not what it means. we got to wait for the full picture to come about, right? So, you know, if you just fragment it, what happens is that uh, we may miss certain things. So also another thing very important about a uh, uh, message from the spiritual world is that God's part is to do the miracles, the signs and wonders, right? God's part, that's his responsibility. But what's our part in it? Our part is obedience. Right? Many people want God to fulfill his end of the deal, but they do not fulfill their end of the deal. Okay? So it doesn't work that way. Right? For certain things to be promised. Like for example, someone said, you know, I received this prophecy years ago. I have not seen a fulfillment of it. You know why you haven't seen a fulfillment of it? Maybe because there's a part of your responsibility that you have not obeyed. Okay? Maybe there's a part of uh, your assignment that you have not fulfilled. So God here is waiting for you to obey your end of the deal. So it's impossible for you to see the whole thing come to pass, right? Just expecting God to perform it without you obeying. Okay? So there's, you must understand there's two parts to that, right? Okay? This all just refreshing your mind. Right? We also concluded last week's teaching that when we receive something from the spiritual world, you could receive it through what? Through your five senses. You could receive it through your eyes, through your thoughts, through your feelings, right? Through your five senses. Sometimes, okay, it could come to you in a dream. Sometimes it could come to you in an open vision. Sometimes it could come to you in a thought. Okay, I remember many times, right? A thought would be dropped into my mind. Go this way. Do this thing. And then I, you know, it may not logical, may not be logical, but as I began to obey it, what I saw was the fulfillment okay, of God's supernatural activity. Right? So I want to just show you a, a little video right now about a little girl who encountered God. Okay? She's a young little girl. But yet she encountered God okay, through an unusual way. I just wanted to watch this video. I was just so happy she was here. Like we had just gone through so much. Even in the womb, Brittany Tomek of Brunswick felt her baby was special. When I was pregnant, they found the cyst on her brain and the white spot in her heart. The smoke signals were there. However, Arzola, nicknamed Zola, was born a healthy baby girl. And then around six months, we noticed she was still like an infant. She wasn't progressing. Tomek went to her pediatrician, who recommended therapy. But she still felt something was wrong. She would just get fevers unexpectedly. She would scream through the night. The littlest, like, ear infections would turn into pneumonia. Next were the seizures. Year after year after year of seeing specialists. Eventually, an ENT recommended Zola get her tonsils removed to treat sleep apnea, which was causing her seizures. A routine procedure. Everything was fine. They went home. And that's when she came in our room in the middle of the night and she went to yell mom and she couldn't make it out. Just all we saw was this black mask come out of her mouth and this just dropped. Zola was covered in blood, lying unresponsive on the floor. She was rushed to Akron Children's Hospital and immediately taken into the OR. So she was almost out of blood and she kept going unresponsive and then coming back. She never flatlined. An hour later, the doctor came out and she said she was fine. She was going to be okay. Do you want to swing on this, Zola? Zola fought for her life and because of her strength, doctors discovered that the hemorrhage was caused by a rare genetic disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It affects the collagen, the connective tissue. So for most people, it's like they're put together with super glue, their bones and their tissues. Hers is like bubble gum. There is no cure, only treatment. Zola will have a lifetime of bleeding, bruising, and pain. 
After a week at the hospital, Zola got to go home. And over the months following her recovery, Tomek says she started to notice a change in her four-year-old. And then that's when, when I was getting her ready for gymnastics. And out of nowhere, she just asked when she can see God again. And it kind of, it took me back for a second. And I was like, Zola, what do you mean? Like, you want to see God again? She's like, yeah, when do I get to see God again? Tomek says despite never talking to Zola about her grave condition, Zola started talking to her parents about the time she died and went to see God. A what? A what? A passenger! Tomek says Zola describes sitting next to Jesus and giving him a hug. says Zola even started drawing pictures of God in her heart. There were a few times I picked up from preschool and the teacher was saying like she got in an argument again about God being real. What do you have to say to people that are like she's four? It's her imagination. It makes me sad that people would think that way and not believe. These are not things that we've put in her head. Tomek believes Zola was saved that day, both physically and spiritually. She had an experience, like she has gone through something that we can't explain and most people can't. And from that passion came purpose. Tomek started a nonprofit called Zola Zebras, which raises awareness and helps families dealing with rare illnesses. I mean, it's day by day, some days minute by minute, and it's just clinging on to faith and continuing to advocate for your child. In Brunswick, Melissa Reed, Fox 8 News. So praise the Lord, right? So what do we see here? What an incredible story, right? Incredible story about this little girl who has an encounter with the living God, right? So this is possible, okay? Anyone can have an encounter with the living God in a very powerful way, right? In this, the case of this girl, she received an actual image. She saw Jesus himself and was transported to heaven. Just imagine how powerful this is, right? So we also understood that when God, when the spiritual world begins to communicate with us, right, what do we do? We receive images, we receive data, we receive information, right? But this information comes in parts, right? So we must wait until there is a completion, right? Before there is an interpretation. It's very important. This is very important. Why? Because when we only receive parts of it, okay, what will happen? There will be a misinterpretation. Okay, this has happened many, many times, right? There's a mistake when it's made. Why? Because there are gaps. And sometimes what we do as humans is that we begin to fill in those gaps by our inaccurate okay, assumption, right? This applies to visions and dreams, right? Scripture says very clearly, we see in part, we understand in part. So it's very important for us not to jump into conclusions. You know, I've seen in the process of my Christian ministry, I've seen so many people make mistakes spiritually. Why? Because they get a part of a certain dream or sometimes it's just you know a prophecy that came to pass and then they want to put it together. They want to play God. They want to assume. They want to presume and tie things together and say God said. God didn't say it. God, there was only one part of it, but then they begin to add so many pieces together, and then eventually the person they're dis disappointed is they themselves. Why? Because okay, they did not wait for the full picture, right, to come to pass, right? They did not wait for the full picture to be concluded, but rather they jumped, okay, into conclusion very quickly. Let's look at an example here in the New Testament. We have an example right in Acts 21 verse 4. And finding disciples we stayed together seven days and they told Paul through the Spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. Okay very interesting. The scripture even here says through the Spirit. Okay this is what not referring 
to the Holy Spirit, but it's referring more to their own spirit. What was happening? Paul was about to make a journey to Jerusalem, right? So here the disciples, okay, they sense that Paul was going to have a lot of trouble, okay? Paul was going to have a lot of problems. So what did they do? They assume and they sense the danger. They sensed it correctly, right? But they also began to interpret the conclusion. What did they do? They tried to stop Paul. Okay? They say, Paul, you should not go because this is going to be a bad experience. This is going to be a bad encounter. Right? See, they, they allowed their emotions to get into what they sense. Sometimes we can have a prophetic sense and then what we do is that we allow our emotions to be entangled within our prophetic sense. Okay? And this is where we miss God right so it's important that we understand everything why uh, everything why because you see our soul okay our soul is the the lens through which we look at our situation sometimes the lens of our soul okay maybe we are going through a hard time Maybe we are going through a time where I remember even in my own life, I went through a time where I couldn't understand certain things and certain things were a little bit blur, right? So when, when, when you are going through something in your soul and you begin to look at a picture of, of what God is trying to do, it is always translated based on what you are seeing, right? If I wear a lens that is red in color, everything I see is red. So what do I say? Oh, everything is red. Everything is not red. My lens is red. Right? So sometimes if your soul, okay, there's a biasness within your soul. Right? There's a, a, there a, a struggle within your soul. So when you look at, look at it that way, what happens is that you begin to make a wrong conclusion. Right? So the, what is the key here? The key is surrender with no assumptions you know one of the important things that i always do okay whenever i'm going to pray for somebody or begin to prophesy with somebody one of the most important things that you have to do as an individual is surrender your emotions to god never allow your emotions to prejudge a situation never allow your human conclusions to prejudge a situation see why? Because when we begin to prejudge a situation, we are playing God. Okay? And this is where we can begin to misplace, right? I mean, perfect example. The Apostle Paul being called to go to Jerusalem and other disciples in the room saying, No, Paul, don't go. They were disciples, men who walked with God, but yet they could not comprehend they could not understand what God was doing right they couldn't see the full picture that's why when you get a vision or when you get a dream or when you get a sensation of what God is saying it's important for you to wait on the Lord wait on the Lord and begin to understand what is the full picture what is God actually trying to say right before you jump into a conclusion, before you begin to dissect and come into your own assumptions, right? The best thing is give it time. Let the whole thing, let the whole experience come together. Let all the pieces come together. And then you will begin to understand, oh, this is God. God wants me to do this. God wants me to go here. God wants me to be at this place. God wants me to respond in such a way, right? Allow the full picture to come together, right? Your own predeterm predetermination, determining factors will always hinder your conclusion, right? You always, it's important to set your gauge at neutral, right? That, that means it doesn't matter what you think about the person. It's immaterial. Why? Because if you want to be sensitive in the spirit to what God is saying, right? Your emotions cannot be entangled. Your mind cannot be entangled. Your preconceived notions cannot be entangled. Your conclusions, your information. That's why I love, you know, among all the churches I minister around the world, 
I love to go to churches where I do not know a single person. I love that situation. Why? Because, okay, I have no idea who they are. I don't have any information about them. Okay, so what I, I love those situations. Why? Because I, I have to lean on the Holy Spirit to find out what is going on. Okay, what is going on with the person? And whatever the Holy Spirit delivers, I just deliver it. See, so it's so important. Why? To, have, to be neutral so that you can connect with the spiritual world. You know, you ask any parent, they always have good feelings towards their children. Okay. Any parent in the world always will have good thoughts, good desires, good dreams for your children. Nothing wrong with that. But you know what? They cannot be prophetically sensitive to those situations. Why? Because they are not neutral. They are biased. Okay? They have an absolute biasness towards their own kids. You see what I'm saying? Or towards, so some pastors do that, right? So then people come into church and they have a biasness already to those people. So every time they prophesy, it's always wonderful things. It's always positive things. It's always encouraging things. Nothing wrong with that. But you know what? It's being led by biasness, not by the Holy Spirit. Not by what God is saying, but rather by what they want, because they have good feelings to that person. They have a good, you know, good heart to that person. You know what I'm saying? So they miss it. You know, many times, you know, I've tell, I, I've certain times God has given me words for certain people. And I said, you know, I said, there's some trouble coming to you. Okay. I have no clue why. And I really do not want to share this with you, but I sense there's problem that's coming towards you. There's some difficulty that's coming towards you, you know, and the person, person may not be happy with what they want to hear from me. But you see, my responsibility is to deliver what God says, what the Spirit, Holy Spirit is saying, not what my emotions are saying, not what my well-wishing is saying but what rather God is saying see I'm talking about how do you work with the spiritual world in order for you to work with the spiritual world you must be neutral right you must not allow your soul right to give you a negative emotion or your soul to be entirely so positive so rosy that you know, you cannot see and you cannot understand what God is saying. Okay, let's go further here. Let's go, let's go a very good example here. Okay, there's this prophet called okay, Agabus. Okay, interesting name. Okay, Acts 21 verse 10. He came in and the disciples were all there. Let's read this, right? We stayed many days. A certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound on his own hands and feet, and he says... Thus says the Holy Spirit, shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt, deliver him into the hands of the Gentile. Look at what Agabus the prophet did. He did not add, he did not subtract. He delivered what the Lord told him. He didn't add, he didn't subtract. He delivered what the Lord told told him right this is important okay if you are going if you are going to be working with the spiritual world it is important that you stay connected right you stay absolutely connected right that you you deliver what the Lord says okay not just what you feel right so he didn't add he did not subtract right so most most of us right most of them what did they do how they interpret? Paul, don't go. Paul intervenes. And this is what Paul says. Okay, I Paul says, I already know chains and tribulations await me. You see, you must remember some things in our Christian life. Some things you can stop through prayer. Some things you must go through. Right? Some things you can stop. You can pray and stop. In Jesus' name, yes, it will stop. But some things 
you have to go through. Right? Like for example, Jesus had to go through Gethsemane. Jesus had to go through certain things. You never see Jesus, you know, Jesus said, Thy will be done. Okay? We can't pray through everything. Okay? Certain things, right? We, as we go through them, like that little girl, that video that you watch, you'd say, why does a little girl need to go through that? Such traumatic experience. But think about it. She went through such a traumatic experience, and in that traumatic experience, she encountered God. She encountered God, right? Okay? What, what, you know? Isn't it worth? Yes, it is worth, right? Look at what happened to Paul. This is so powerful, right? Paul went to Jerusalem and he went to prison. Okay, one third of the New Testament was written by Paul. Much of the theology that was written by Paul, right? Many of the books that were written, they were called prison epistles. Okay, remember, they were prison epistles. They were written as he went through what? Some of the most difficult trials in his life. Some of the most painful experience in his life. Right? Paul went through that. That torturous season in his life. Look at what people were trying to do. They were trying. You know, their heart was good. Right? Their heart was good. They had a good feeling towards Paul. They did not want Paul to struggle. They did not want Paul to go through that agony of prison life. Their motivation was right. Right? But look at it. They allowed their emotions to hinder what God was saying. Sometimes, unknowingly, we allow our emotions to hinder what God is saying. Okay? Truth. Okay? We love somebody or we care for somebody. So because we care for somebody, we love for somebody, what do we do? Okay? When the Holy Spirit, we sense that God is saying something that they may not want to hear, they may not like to hear, right? What do we do? We say, oh, I, I better not share that with them because they will get upset with me. Yeah, they may get upset with you, but remember this, if you do not share that with them, okay? They may be dead tomorrow. Okay? You may have been the last opportunity for them to hear that word so that they can turn around. Okay? So that they can change their life. So that they can stop in the direction that they were going. See? So you must remember the spiritual world, when there is a word release from the spiritual world, okay, some okay, it's important for us to understand. Right? We should not be so hindered by our emotion. Right? We cannot be hindered okay, by our soul. When we are hindered by our soul, what will happen? Okay? That we will not deliver what God is saying to that person or to that situation. Okay? And as a result that we did not deliver that word, we did not okay, declare that word, that person missed it. Right? I, I know so many of us, right? We we refuse to share the gospel to some of our family members. We refuse to share the gospel. We refuse to pray for our family members. Right? We don't share it with them. Okay? We don't want to wait until their deathbed to share the gospel to them. Are you with me? Your, your goal is not just to get people to the gates of heaven. Your goal is to get them to a relationship with Jesus. Remember that. Gates of heaven is not good enough. A relationship with Jesus is crucial. Are you with me? It's like they can come into the banquet feast, but they cannot be part of the feast. What's the point? Right? They, they, they miss their entire life. Okay, of the opportunity, right? So the disciples almost sent Paul in a wrong direction. Can you see this? Almost sent the Apostle Paul in a wrong direction. Why? Because they allowed their emotion. The standard mode 
through which the prophets, okay, God deals with his prophets. Remember, it was visions, parables, dreams, enigmas. Right? Remember what the scripture said? Right? How he, he talks to his prophets through dreams, through visions, through parables. Right? Like different ones, like even the kings. Right? Remember King Nebuchadnezzar saw this dream. Right? So sometimes that's how God communicates. Right? But that's what the Bible is saying here. There is a greater level of understanding where, where God speaks to us plainly. For us to come to a place where there is a greater level of understanding, our soul must grow, must mature and come to the place of understanding. Right? Like for example, right? What's the, what's the, 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 the different kinds of you know, musicians? Right? The different kinds of uh, instrumentalists. Right? Some that have studied music so well, right? It becomes second nature. Right? So when they begin to play an instrument, they're not constantly looking at the notes. Right? They are fully engaged. Why? Because they have so greatly matured okay, in the skills of music right now that becomes second nature. Second nature to them. So in the same way, we can grow in a different level with God. We can come to the place where God doesn't need to give you parables, enigmas, okay, riddles or vision. God can speak to you plainly and you can understand how powerful is that, right? So God was saying to Aaron, Aaron and Miriam, right? We looked at that last week. I speak to Moses plainly. I speak to you through dreams, through vision, but I speak to Moses plainly, right? In the New Testament, the promise of God declares that you can grow to a level where God can speak to you plainly. When that happens, interpretation will come to you much easier. Remember what I said, right? If you want to see God use you, you must constantly keep yourself at neutrality. Okay? You cannot form conclusions, you cannot release you know, thoughts or emotions just based on feelings, but rather being led by the Lord. There must be a sense of urgency that God drops into your heart, that you sense it and you say, you know what, I need to release that word. I need to declare this word. Why? So that that person hearing may, you know, wake up and maybe change their lifestyle so that, you know, that the danger doesn't come to them. So that the breakthrough that is meant for them, that will come to them. Right? So let's go on here. Right? John chapter 15. Let's look at this verse. Very powerful. Verse 1. He said, These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you. Right? My commandment is that you love one another as I have loved you. Okay? Let's go down. And he says this. Right? You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer do I call you servants. For servants do not know what the master is doing. Servants do not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things I heard from my Father, I have made known to you. Look at what Jesus is saying here. This is so powerful. Jesus is giving them a choice. Jesus is saying, you want to be a master servant or you want to be God's friend. Okay? So, it's so much better to be God's friend than be just a master servant. Okay? Remember, it's a progressive relationship. You start as a servant. Then you become a friend. You don't become a friend of God the day you accept God. You don't. You start first. Right? As okay, you grow. First as a disciple. A learned disciple. Right? Before you can move into friendship. Let me explain this further, right? This verse does not mean automatically, but what it declares here, potentially. We all have the potential to move from servanthood to friendship. From servanthood to friendship. We all have the potential. But you see, what is the difference? A disciple, a disciple is one who has surrendered his life 100%. A disciple is one who has given his life to be taught by the master. 
Right, that's a disciple. That means a disciple puts himself at the feet of the master. And he's a student, right? A disciple is one who is willing to lay down his biasness, his own theology, his own ideology, and learn his master's theology. Okay, remember, we all have our own theology. We all have our own culture. We all have our own upbringing. But when we decide to follow Jesus, we have to put all that aside. That's why somebody tells me, you know, I'm Christian, but I got prejudice, okay, against uh, black people, white people. Something is wrong. Something is absolutely wrong. Why? Because if you follow Jesus, all that has changed. Okay? You look at people as people, not on the basis of the color of their skin, but on right the conversion of their hearts. Whether they have been changed by Jesus. right? A disciple who is one who allows his master to break him, change him, correct him into the image and the likeness of Jesus. See, a disciple okay, may fail may fall but he will rise again right he may lose okay couple of battles but he will win the war he will keep moving why because he's a disciple he's not a quitter okay when i hear somebody saying i used to be a christian okay that's a quitter right that's a quitter say see if you cannot be a disciple you cannot be a friend. Right? If Jesus is your second, then you cannot be his friend. Right? Only his friend knows the secrets. Remember what he said here? He said, the friend knows what me and my father know. Right? Let's go to another scripture. Matthew 27, 21. He says, if you want to be perfect, go and sell. Right? And give to the poor. You will have treasures in heaven and come follow me. Who was this telling to? He was saying this to the rich young ruler. Look at what the rich young ruler, when he heard it, he went away sorrowful. He had great possession. The rich young ruler could not receive him. Why? Because he could not lay down. He could not lay down his treasure. I'm not kidding. He could not lay down. Okay? Some of the things that were important to him in his life. Right? There are Christians who see Jesus as a savior. They say, oh Jesus, you're my savior. But you know what's the problem? Jesus is not Lord. He's only savior. What savior? That means he's SOS. They press button, they expect him to show up. Right? Only savior. But he's not Lord. Right? So is Jesus, are you just a servant or are you a friend of God? Okay, verse 27, I love this same passage. Peter answered and said to him, Lord, we have left all and followed you. Look at that. We have left all. Yes. What did the disciples do? They quit their profession. They quit whatever they were doing. They quit their plans. They quit their dreams. And what did they do? They followed Jesus. Let me tell you something. If you make that decision to go after Jesus like that, look at what the answer Jesus says. Verse 28. Assuredly I say to you, that in the generation when the Son of Man sits on the throne in His glory, you who follow me will also sit on twelve thrones. This is a promise that He makes to His disciples. Right? You will sit on twelve thrones. You see, without sacrifice there is no reward. Right? If it didn't, if it didn't cost you nothing, it will mean nothing to you, right? It will have to cost you something, right? So what is Peter saying here? He's saying, Lord, we have surrendered, right? So your relationship with God is based on your surrender. 
not based on what you receive, but based on what you have given to him. Right? So John 16 verse 12 says, right? This is what the Lord says. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. Right? Look at that. He says, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. There are many things. Why? Because God's waiting for maturity. Maturity determines understanding, determines revelation. Right? He uses the word, you cannot bear them. What's bear? Bear means you cannot tolerate. You cannot endure. You cannot suffer. Christian life is not measured by how many trophies you have, church. It's measured by how many scars you have. It's how much pain you have carried. How much tribulation, how much persecution you have suffered for the sake of Christ Jesus. Are you with me? Right? Let's go on here. I want to kind of wrap things up. Verse 16, not chapter 16, verse 13. He says, however, when he, the spirit of truth will come, he will guide you into all truth. Look at that. The assignment of the Holy Spirit is what? To take you into deeper truth. Deeper truth. Deeper truth. Deeper truth. How does he take you into deeper truth? Right? How? Become God's friend. Become God's friend. When you become God's friend, He says, He will declare. What is declare? He will show you. He will manifest to you. He will manifest His goodness to you. He will manifest His glory to you. He will manifest His grace to you. Church, we must go to this greater level in God. We cannot, we should not remain as babes. To receive from the spiritual realm, we have to walk closer with the Holy Spirit. Every day, we have to receive a fresh word from God. You see, we cannot wait just for Sunday. Every single day, we must open up our hearts to God so that we will hear Him speak to us crystal clear. The spiritual world has lots of solutions, breakthroughs, and blessings that are waiting for you. Waiting for you. Right? Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Right? Why? So that the blessings of Abraham might come upon us. Look at how it comes. How does the blessing comes? Right? We might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Who brings the blessing? Who is the vehicle of that blessing? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the vehicle of that blessing. Right? From the spiritual world, He will bring that blessing of Abraham. Right? Generation after generation, God's blessing will keep coming on you, right? Through the Holy Spirit. Without the spiritual world's intervention, your life is ordinary, right? I've seen so many people's lives, right? When there is no intervention of the spiritual world, see, in this world, people try to buy their way through money, through influence, right? To who they know, to all the contacts, right? You don't need all that. What you need is a relationship with the Heavenly Father. If you have a relationship with the Heavenly Father, there will be spiritual intervention in your life, right? Whatever you need whatever circumstance you are in there will be exceptional intervention there will be extraordinary intervention you see things will not be delayed 
right? Things will not be hindered, but everything will flow in its time. Those things will happen. You do not need to be like this world manipulate like look at the world today right it's based on crisis it goes from crisis to crisis it goes from one pandemic to another disaster that's how the world lives you and i don't need to live that way why because we are not subjected to the paradigm of this world but we are subjected amen to the rudiments of heaven you see commit your heart daily to the Lord. Commit your life daily to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, guide me every day. Don't let my day tomorrow be ordinary. Don't let it just be another normal day. Let it be an exceptional day. Let it be an extraordinary day. I want to see your intervention. Okay? I want to see your mighty hand coming through my life every single day every single day right i remember reinhard bonke you know he was a missionary to africa i remember one testimony that he had he said he did not have 30 dollars in his pocket to pay the rental for his mission he did not have 30 dollars in his pocket to pay the rental for his mission but look at what god did this man shook Africa, right? God used him to turn Africa from a dark continent to a glorious continent of Jesus Christ, right? Why? Because he did not give up. He knew who he was walking with, okay? To the carnal world, right? In a single second, everything is gone. Life is gone. Single second. But to a spiritual person, right, there's a potential for blessing, breakthrough, an enormous possibility, right? My concluding scripture, John 16 verse 25, Jesus says, These things I've spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I no longer will speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. Look at that. I will tell you plainly about the Father. No longer figurative, but plainly. He's telling his disciples, right? Why didn't he do it immediately? He was waiting for their maturity. He was waiting for their growth. He was waiting for them to go to a higher level, for them to walk at a deeper level. I want to challenge you today. Go to a higher level. Go to a deeper level so that God did not, don't need to speak to you figuratively. He don't need to speak to you through parables. He don't need to speak to you through dreams, give you a nightmare. But he can speak to you plainly plainly and powerfully there is a level of relationship God wants you and I to enter into where we are so renewed changed in our soul that our soul is so in line with the Holy Spirit that when God speaks to us it will be crystals clear our spirit will get it our soul will get it in an instant second there will be no blind spot it will be face to face heart to heart mind to mind we receive everything that the spiritual world has for us I want to leave you with a few questions where are you today do you hear the voice of God regularly? What changes do you need to make in order to make that a reality? How can you get so
so close to God that you can hear Him. You know, such an irony. One of the greatest men that I admire in my life was the late Prime Minister of Singapore, Mr. L.K.Y. He took a fishing village and converted it to one of the richest metropolis in the world. Okay? But yet, on his deathbed, they asked him, Do you know God? Here was a man that was so wise, so learned, such a great leader. He gained the whole world, but yet he lost his soul because he had no answer. He did not know who God was. He had a lifetime to find Him. He had a lifetime to encounter Him. But He was too busy. He was too busy with the affairs of the world that did not matter to the spiritual world. It did not matter. Where are we today? I pray that we examine our hearts. Father, we commit ourselves to you today. And we pray, Lord, take us closer. Bring us closer to you. That when you speak, we hear plainly, crystal clear, accurately, without interference that we are one with you almighty God we bless you we thank you for your grace your mercy and your everlasting love in Jesus name. Amen and Amen. God I bless you and God keep you and God watch over you. I have an important announcement. I'll be teaching one more week and after that I'll be taking a, a week, uh, three weeks of a break uh, and during that time different pastors I uh, will be speaking and I pray that you will continue to grow and continue to learn and continue to be blessed by the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a fantastic week in Jesus' name, amen.